Hi, it's Michael, and I'm here at Lei Gallery in Taichung City, Taiwan. And we're here with Daryl Bisson, and he is, uh, do you say ceramicist, pottery? Uh, I do both sculpture and ceramics. Okay. And uh, you know we come to Lei Gallery often, and this is a group show? This is a show of my students. So okay. at, my, at my studio, uh, I teach pottery classes. Okay. Uh, most people who come, they learn how to use the, the pottery wheel. Okay. And so most of the things you're going to see in the show are made from the pottery wheel. Some people also do what we call hand building, which is uh, yes. basically just just making things freely. Uh, play. Um, but the students who are in the show uh, have been with me for at least a year and a half, all of them. Okay. Uh, and as you can see, they've all got their own distinct styles that they're developing right now. And you do a show every year here at Lake Gallery? Uh, roughly every two years. Every two years, okay, yes, John was telling me that. So this piece is yours here, mm -hmm. and it looks like shells, but mm -hmm. these, you made them with a mold, or you hand These are from the molds, right? So, okay. uh, so this, there's a tradition in ceramics of sculptural teapots. Right. Uh, not just a functional teapot, uh, the typical thing that we're just, uh, whole tea and poor tea, but you give it some kind of a unique character for the sculptural aspect of it. Right. So for this one, what I did is after throwing the, the body, throwing all the parts, the, you know, the, the spout, all the different things, I took some plaster molds, I had some real shells which I used to make molds and uh, there may be like five or six different shapes here. And then I just press mold, as we said. You put the clay in, you stick that in there, and then you just join all over the surface. You join the, the things there. Yes. The, the different shells like that with clay. Uh, fire at the first time, and then you do the glazing. And in the very, very end, I added the, the real driftwood handle. There. Wonderful. And it, it looks, I don't know, it's probably not showing on camera as well as it is in person, but when you first look at it, you think it is. It is shell. Well, I try to I try to glaze everything uniquely. And are you carving in it as well, or adding no, any details? No, these, these were just just That's from the real shells, press molded, and then put together. Like so that. it's showing off from the mold. Mm -hmm. So Daryl has another piece in the show, and we're going to go look at that one. Okay, and this is the second piece that Daryl has in the show. And this is called octopus platter. And how was this one made? Uh, this one is a little bit different from the the. In this case, the octopus was modeled by hand. Okay. I just took some clay, uh, obviously working from pictures and just every different angle of the octopus, and just modeled it and, and applied it onto the the throne platter. Right. The three right here are done using a technique where you draw on tracing paper. Right. You put that on the wet clay, and then with a wooden tool, you, you trace it in. So you you. Uh, you impress the image into the clay as a guide, and then the, the brown, the color of each one, is uh, a special color. It's something we call an ongo, which is just colored clay that you put on top of the usual clay. Wow. So it almost seems like this, well, I guess in the light, this is not as shiny as the octopus, like it has more of a shine to it? Um, I guess this does have a little bit more. This is a clear glaze on top. Okay. Okay. These colored glazes are different, but the clear glaze does tend to be very shiny. And this is wonderful too. Like okay. this is many, many different layers of glazes. Yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, the thing about glazing is that you take a glaze and it's say blue. You take another glaze that's yellow. If you layer them, it's not necessarily going to be anything predictable. Right. It's not like paint, like pigment, yes. where blue and yellow you're going to get green. It's right. not that way. Might be blue and yellow will produce a different blue, right. or blue and yellow will produce like a gray or something that you totally don't expect. Because what's happening in the firing in the kiln is uh, all these different parts, the many different ingredients in the glaze, are combining in some strange way that you might not even right. be able to understand. But in the end, you get some some fired result that's sometimes very very unique. And I took some pottery classes, and we did a lot of like the raku firing. Mm -hmm. Right, that's, so that's different. Right, you're that's getting all kinds of textures and right. With with raku, what you're doing, the most important thing is that when you take the pot out of the hot kiln, you put it in the sawdust or newspaper, yes. whatever, and that that. Uh, Combustion is what creates the surface. Yeah, sometimes a crackle or something. Right. So, so there are two types of things with with glaze with uh, with glazes. Either you have what they call an oxidation atmosphere, like this was fired in a, an electric kiln. Right. But with raku, you you get a reduction atmosphere, right. as we call it. Right. And that's the thing with working with clay is there's so many steps 
where there could be something that goes wrong, like in the misfire, it could explode. Exactly. I tell my students all the time, it's like a mantra in the class, never become emotionally attached to anything you've made and it's totally finished, totally out of the glaze count and ready to be used. Right. Because there can be cracking, you could get a bad glaze, you can drop something that's yeah. during the process. Some of these things can go wrong. And, there's, and if you're doing the multiple firings, Again, mm -hmm. that right. is mm -hmm. that's something as well. Mm -hmm. Well, it's it's wonderful. And it's it's wonderful to find the media too yeah, because we've you. heard so much about you. How many students are in this show with you? Uh, well, in this show, uh, besides me, my wife is in the show. Okay. Uh, she's a painter and she does tile painting in addition to her other uh, more traditional painting stuff. Uh, and then the students are four of them. Okay. So we'll, we'll try to talk to them. Would you like to meet them? Yeah, yeah, we'd like to talk to them as well. And the show that you had here last, I think you were, didn't you go to Portugal and you were mm -hmm. doing something with the tie? Right, right. I saw. In 2017, my wife and I went to Portugal. Right. Uh, there's a city there, it's, it's about an hour north of Lisbon, so we've called it behind you. It's like what Inga is for Thailand. It's yes. the big ceramics place. Yes. And we were there for maybe seven months, and we learned Thai painting. Right. Which my wife mostly does, yes. right. and also some glaze chemistry, which which I do in my work. Okay, and then maybe sometime in the future we could come see you at your studio and sure, of see more of your work. Oh, absolutely. Okay. okay, thank you. So let's go talk to some of the students that are also in this show. Hi, it's Michael, and I'm back with Florence Chen, and Florence is Daryl's wife. And this is your piece here. Yes. So you are a painter? Yes, I'm a painter. Okay. And uh, I also, six years ago, I also went to Portugal yes, to right. learn the tile painting. Yes. So we learned a lot of different yes. type of tile painting from 11th century yes. and until nowadays painting. Yes. yes. And so this is, these are individual tiles or are they? Yes, they are individual tiles and I'm mounted on hardware. Oh, wonderful. And then you've painted with glaze. Yes, with glaze. There are no fire glaze. Okay. And so you're you're painting it almost like a watercolor. Or almost, but they are more difficult. Yes. Because you have to buy on tiles. Yes. The, the quality of the, the glaze in Taiwan is not as good as actually makes more. So so they don't flow so well. <laughs> no. And are you drawing on it? First? Yes, yeah. I, I joined my first. And uh, this, this scenery actually from the neighborhood I live, I live also near the mountain. Yes, that so, kind of right. Yeah, so you look down and see layers and layers of mountain. Because the Indian grass. Yeah, the, the, the yeah, wild so grass. Yes. Yeah, beautiful. So it's called Autumn Wind. Yes, so they 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 you had some tiles. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They are relief tiles. Yes. Yeah, they are like uh, 11th century, that yes. type of style. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I told Daryl that I'd like to come to your studio to see more of your work. Thank you. And uh, I was invited to your show last year, but we couldn't make it. So I'm so glad to finally meet these guys because it's so beautiful and so interesting to because you know tiles are usually they'll paint a design on it and even if it's a mural it's very kind of blocky but you're you're creating a yeah yours is like it's like a painting yeah i'm a painter so it's yeah. no painter yeah it's and this part i actually pick the weeds yes and i pick Put the glaze on top and press on top. Yeah, no, it's, like you can see that's how you get some more sunny. texture. Yeah. Yes. Oh, it's got a little texture yeah, here. Yeah, you can see that a little green. Something yeah. stick on the wings. Yeah, no, it's beautiful. I love the blending of the color here. So, Thank you. if you do ceramics, it's as we were talking to Daryl, every step something can break. Yes. Every firing there could be, and you don't know how it's going to work out. So yes. it's absolutely beautiful. I'm so happy to finally meet you. We're going to hopefully set up a studio tour and see more of your work. Thank sure. you, Florence. Looking forward for that. And we're going to talk to some other students who are in this show. Hi, it's Michael, and I'm back with Onasha Mapatuna. She is one of the students at Daryl's studio. Nice to meet you. 
and this is her work here. So tell us about this. You, you were making this on the wheel? So this, yeah, this part here, I did it on the wheel. I put it on the wheel to look kind of like a little bit of a vase. This is protruding out maybe right. and then I've always had this vision of wanting to incorporate some sort of weaving material using maybe bamboo okay yeah and I gave it a try this was actually the very first time I tried on pottery weaving before I was writing with my grandpa right. weaving chairs right. uh, that's where I got my inspiration from fabulous yeah and I actually was not quite as fun with bamboo here I did have to go to quite a few places to find it. Right. And because it doesn't, the weaving here doesn't really work like, you know, when it's on a chair. Right. I had to use thread to keep it together and then continue weaving it upwards. Yeah, that's what I basically did. Beautiful. So it makes media this clay, fabric, and thread. Wow. Yeah. It's wonderful. And where did you find this? So, these, I went to. Um, art supply store to yes. get these, and this part I made it by myself. Wonderful, <laughs> very cool. Used to paper and stuff like that. Yeah, so this is yeah. yours, and I my other favorite nice. piece is yours as well. That's this one, this kind of donut here. Yeah. Okay, this is called Tea Alore, Alo Alo yes. and how is this made? So, the basic shape is the donut here. It's also thrown on the wheel. No way. <laughs> really? So, usually when you throw something like a bowl or yes. a cup, it's just one wall. Yes. For this, you have to throw two walls and then kind of, you know, close it in. So wow. it attaches on the top. And that's how you get the donut So I threw the donut shape and then I threw, made this lid, kind of the top piece. Separate them and I made a little stand. Both of these were attached. And is it hollow inside? Yeah, it's okay. all hollow inside. So you can use it as a vase? Yeah. Okay, that's, wow, that's beautiful. I don't know if you can see through that. And you have another piece that we're going to go see. Okay, this is Anasha's other piece. This is called Galactic Grace. And I love this little sparkle of the gold here. So th this is again the same system on the wheel. On the wheel, so I first threw a donut. Right. So it was completely round, and then I cut a piece off from right. here. Because I have the vision of making it look like a moon. Right. Yeah. So that's what I did. So I threw this piece on the wheel separately and attached this one on the top. Wow. So this is just a sphere. It's just a round thing. And yeah. And the glaze is so interesting as well. Yeah, so it's two glazes mixed together, and then another glaze was splattered on the top to get some. You know, I want I have a vision of making it look like a galaxy. Yes. So I did a little bit of an experiment with a color called ocean green. Right. So when all these three colors mixed together, it just came out really beautiful, looking like a galaxy. Well, yeah, you you succeeded. It's yeah. absolutely beautiful. As you're talking, I'm thinking in my mind because I did take some ceramic classes in, in university but out of these three pieces that worked how many did you have that didn't work out for you? So this was a series I started with one of the pieces there first two of them didn't work out okay yeah and there were some cracks right yeah uh, because I was trying something different so the wall was too thin so there was a crack yeah. yeah, because uh, that's why I stopped doing ceramics because I hand built, I did the wheel as well. But the bis firing, something could happen once you put the glaze on. Oh, I wanted it green, it turned up more blue. Like, I just, I'm too much of a control freak to just kind of go with it. Especially if it's too it yes. could be very unpredictable. Yes. Sometimes you might not get what you're really hoping for. Yes. And it's like a science, which, which I'm not good at either. I want for sure. 
know? So I would always be talking to my teacher saying, this is for sure going to be this, and she would be like, we got to try it. And then we also did raku, where we just throwing it in with the wood chips and stuff, but then it was making a crackle glaze that I didn't want. So anyway, your work is fabulous, and we're hoping to go to Daryl's studio, so hopefully, when are you taking the lesson there? Okay, so maybe we'll go some sometime to see the class there. That year. Well, wonderful to meet you. And we were so happy to hear that she's from one of my favorite countries, Sri Lanka. So I'd love to see that work in your show up in your work as well. The real flavor. Is this other donut yours as well? It's getting crowded in here, so we're just going to take a picture. It is the opening. Congratulations. And we'll see you at the studio. Hopefully. Let's talk to some more artists. Hi, it's Michael, and I'm back with another of the artists in this group show here at Lake Gallery. This is Keegan Whitton. Keegan, nice to meet you. And these are your works here. So, this is hand built. This is all done by hand. I can just that you're rolling out a slab and then trying to texturize it so it looks like wood. Okay. Um, so these three essentially were hand built and this one I hand built with white clay. Okay. And then we glazed it uh, in like two different places to create this like wood kind of thing. Oh. And what is the the fungus inspiration? The fungus inspiration comes from my mother's uh, garden. Okay. She has a secret little pathway through through trees and bushes and things. Right. And on on one of the trees was like mushrooms similar to this growing and it just it stuck with me and then when I came back to Taiwan I was like I've got to do something like that and create like the secret garden kind of effect. And do you do any kind of other medium of artwork? Or? Um cooking. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Our work. yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I do enjoy cooking. Um, I did it professionally for a while, right. um, but well, um, yeah, this is my my medium. So I, I really do enjoy. It. So you're taking the class on Sundays? Yeah, I've yeah. I've been with her for about five years. Oh wow! So I've I've sort of, sort of finished the class right. and just I've used the studio as now you're going to work. Yeah, okay. it's my work. It's quite interesting. Yeah. And, uh, how are you getting this texture? Are you just drawing it on? Or this, this was done through how I did this was I had a, a branch yeah. from a tree that had fallen down and I right. was like, this I like this texture. I'm going to take this piece of wood and roll it, roll it onto the, the pet. Right. And it just came up with this texture. Wonderful. And then, yeah, with the glazing, I use a black glaze right. and I brush it on and then I wipe, wipe it. it. So it's just, it's just essentially the, 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 yeah, the yeah, cracks that are, yeah. that are filled with so them. Interesting. Yeah. And a lot of, I find the ceramics don't really show well on camera. You really have to see it. But if you were here, you would think this is wood. Now, Keegan also has a very cool piece on the other side of the room, so we're going to go look at that. So we're back with Keegan's um, other piece. Now, is this on the wheel? This was thrown on the wheel. Okay. Yes. So you, it's thrown on the wheel and then you've added yeah. these. Yeah, altered it and added extra things onto it. Okay. So we've got some more. More mushrooms. More mushrooms. And then I've added the, the frog, which is an ode to a, a pond that was in my, my parents' Uh, garden. They have a pond. They have these little these little frogs that that sit on the on the on the little shrubbery around the, the pond. Right. And so I got the, a little bit of an ode to that the frog coming out of the base. So the other piece is the secret garden, yes. and then this is the pond. Now, do you prefer throwing on the wheel more? Or yeah. So with with throwing, I. I enjoy throwing more than hand building. Okay. Hand building, I've sort of been doing for the last six, seven months. Okay. Um, so it's relatively new to me, and so that's why I've started now 
drink that more. So it's more like a challenge? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Throwing, yeah. Like, throwing for me is, is more than a relaxation. Yeah. And soon we will have to do it. We'll do it. But this was the, the first piece that I started with. And I, I, I went up to the other ones. Yes. It's not my fault. Yeah. 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 Uh, and that's also why I chose the bells, is that sort of ripples in the, in the, in the water kind of through it. And as Dara was saying before, when, when you're working with clay, you can, anything can happen. Yeah. So at any stage of firing, yeah. so it's hard to get too attached to something. But I've heard many things fail. Well, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. Out of the three, or you've got several pieces there, but how many things do you have that don't work? I would say it's a 20% failure rate. That you're just like, oh, this is not right, that's not right, I don't really like that. Or if it just completely cracks or yeah. just breaks reports. I always found it was the, the glazing. Sometimes it was too thick and it's bumpy. Yeah. Or, yeah. You know, I, I do find that sometimes you get you get heavy mistakes and then you get not so heavy mistakes. Where something works out really well and then there's uh, times when it's it's the glaze is not right and it's not like it or it's just it's not the color I wanted. No. Or so if it just cracks in a certain way. It's just not, not that ideal. Well, we're hoping to go to the uh, studio. We so hope you will be there on a Sunday during the lesson. Your work is fabulous. And congratulations on the resume. There's another artist there. We're going to go talk to her next. Hi, it's Michael, and I'm back with Marissa New Love. And Marissa is also a student at Daryl's. Uh, studio, and this is your piece here. Yeah, this is one of my pieces. Okay, so it's a lidded vessel. So it's hand thrown. Hand thrown. Yes. Yeah. So this was thrown on the wheel, and this was thrown on the wheel as well. Okay. And then I added this. This was hand done, and this was hand done. Okay. As well. And is this yeah. the only medium you work in in ceramics? Um, or? I've been trying to get more into fiber art. Actually, okay. I've recently been learning crochet and knitting. Oh, cool. And so eventually I'd like to combine the two. Actually. Oh, that means yeah. you've got your yeah. friend who's doing the Yes, I know. I would love cool to piece. learn from her. And how long have you been taking this class? Uh, with Daryl? Yes. I think four. Five years now. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I did pottery as a, as a child. Oh, yeah. yeah. so I did. I grew up doing pottery, and I did pottery before I came to Taiwan. Okay. Um, so it's kind of just always been Something. in my life yeah, in pottery. some way. Okay. Yeah. And now, this is a group show, so the pieces are all kind of mixed up. So we're going to go see Marissa's other piece now. Okay, this is Marissa's second piece, and this is called Surprise Container. And um, you've got a lot of the glaze crackles yes. here. Yeah, so the process that I used was uh, I used Ongo. And um, unfortunately, during the firing process, it all peeled away from okay. the original container. And Daryl was kind enough to save all of the shatterings, I guess you right. could call it. Um, and I, so like these pieces do not actually stay um, on, they okay. all come off. Right. Um, and so actually I use it as a confetti container okay. in my own house. Right. Um, and so when I had, when we had the show, I was like, oh, let me combine the, um, the broken pieces right. with what I already have that I use it in my real life. Cool. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate that it didn't turn out how it was supposed to, yeah. but it's but okay, it's a happy accident. Yeah, well that's and, what we were talking yeah. about with ceramics is, I did it as well and I left okay. it because I'm too much of a control freak. Yeah, you can't have control. And there's too many <laughs> steps that things can go wrong. Yes. So this also on the wheel. Yes, this was also on the wheel. Yeah, I was getting into the lidded vessels. Yeah. So, we did do the interview with uh, Kate and Jonathan from mm. Kate Nicholson. Yes, Ceramics, love her, yeah. And I was having flashbacks of my schooling where okay. it's like wedge, wedge, wedge. It's a lot of work, yeah. Because you've got to get the bubbles out. So, yes. you, you, 
done it on the wheel, it survived that. You bit fire, it survived that. You glazed it, and then it just was the last like, no. step. So yeah, that was like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah, it was, it was all, some of it was still on, um, and then uh, eventually it just all started to come apart, and right. so I just used a grinder and right. I just grinded it all off. Yeah. You can still actually see some of the design that I had. Yeah. This was supposed to be obviously these three colors, and it right. was going to be like white, yellow. Yeah. Um, and it was supposed to have this kind of chevron-ish right. um, feel. Yeah, it took me about like two hours to figure out all the math of it all. Yeah. And then um, glazing, well, ongoing it, it's four layers, so that right. took another couple hours. And unfortunately, it didn't work out, but that's just how pottery is sometimes. But you still have this, so it's not like yes. it's exploded. Right. Yeah, yeah and I still can that. use it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah. So we're going to pretend that nothing will work. And you've got another piece. I have two more. Yeah. Okay, let's go see your other pieces. So these two, I think, kind of mirror each other in a way. Um, I really got into carving. Um, I think that's just something I've been experimenting more with. Right, right. Um, and so, now for carving, yeah. you, you hand broke yes. it on the wheel yes. to let it dry, yes. and then you're carving. Yeah, so once it gets to be, I think, like leather hard, right. Yeah, I'm like carving it away, and so I use two different sizes of um, tools. <laughs> Um, one to make the wider carb, and then another one. I I was kind of playing with the, just I guess juxtaposition between the wider carving and the smaller one, and so you can actually see that there's a smaller one in between some of them. Right. And I really like, I just really liked it, and I love how it came out with this glaze. I think it looks really nice with the raw clay as well. Yeah, I, know. I like how they mix it. And yeah. They, this color here is quite interesting yes. too. This one you can't really see unless. Let me like make it brighter. Um, it's really. So it's got a crackle. In there. It has a bit of a crackle, but it also has a bit of like a purple. Right. And I really love the iridescentness of it, and the gold that came through was just so unexpected. Very cool. And it was really awesome. And so I did the same thing. I've been playing a lot with these. Um, all of my pottery, I believe that all pottery should be used. That's my philosophy anyway. I don't want anything to just sit on a shelf. Uh, and so I use this as my morning breakfast bowl. <laughs> and obviously this is as a planter. And I use that one over there so the food gets cold. So, yeah, I like to use things that have a purpose. Yeah, and it's fun to have a group show because you're, you're seeing the different yes. styles. Yes. So, this is your friend. Yes, this is an option. Yeah. So, that would be a Yes. Yes. I was also yeah. talking about it with her. I was like, I need you to teach me how yeah. to do this. Yeah, it's great. So we hope to see you at the yeah. Sunday class at the yeah. studio or we'll arrange a time. We've waited a long time to meet Daryl and his wife, so we'd like to see the studio. We've got one more student that we're going to talk to, and that's the show. Thank you, Marissa. Yeah. Wonderful work. Thank you. Okay, I am back now with Dandy Lopez, and you are another artist here in this group show, and these are your works here, and these are... Did you throw them on the wheel? Yeah. So all of my work has been on the wheel so far. So these are thrown cups. Okay. I use white clay for it. Okay. Um, one of the directions that I've been going towards in my pottery is using angorbs, which is basically the colored clay that you put onto your thrown things. Right. So the process I went through is like after I threw it, I would carve into it. Right. And I would fill on, I would fill in those little crevices with different colored. Uh, on boobs. So, right. Yeah. So you that's know, that's yeah. the process that I've been going through. That's the form that I've been focusing on in the last few months. Okay. So on globes. So these three cups are three different types of you know 
random scribblings yes. that I colored. Yeah. And how long have you been taking this class? I started in um, October 2022, so it's like a year and a half. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm the newest uh, I'm the, uh, well, yeah, the student. Yeah. And did you do any other medium before? Were you painting or? No, not at all. Like, uh, I explained to Daryl that I got into pottery because I wanted to do a skill. I right. wanted to learn how to make something. Right. Um, I'm more of a craft person. Right. I would knit. Um, buildings give me give me tools. I how we build it. Right. And pottery is something that I've wanted to do for so long. And he used to offer classes only on weekdays, but I work full time so that wasn't possible. Right. When the weekend classes opened up, there was a slot for Sunday. I jumped into the opportunity. And, yeah. Good for you. So you have these pieces here, and then you have another one? I have three more. Okay. So let's go see her other work. So this is Dandy's other piece, and this is... Uh, well, again, a throne bowl. It's another throne bowl. Right. So I threw this bowl to have like a very, very tall foot. Okay. Because I want it to be something that you eat a dessert out of. Right. And this is actually the bowl that started me in my on bowl uh, journey. Journey, right. Journey. So if you can see, uh, I was inspired by a friend's shirt. Like right. I met up with a friend and she was wearing a shirt with Aboriginal prints. Right. And so the very next day at pottery class, I decided to start carving. And then that's when Daryl gave me the idea, hey, do you want to put angles into those carvings? And then here we are. You can add to it. This was uh, maybe three straight hours of just filling every nook and cranny. Yes. I, I've never done it, but I've seen it, and it's, it's quite intense. And, and in here, you've got a little bit of a crackle going. Is this a clear glaze that yes. you put in? It's a clear glaze that has that crackling effect. It makes it uh, a little. It makes it seem a little more easy. Yes. I yes. put very, very predictable patterns outside. Right. And I like that inside we have unpredictable patterns. Something that the glaze itself. Yes, so it happened during a fire. It's very, uh, yeah, it's quite nice and it's quite solid. And it looks like it really you. So you were saying you just wanted to do ceramics, you didn't have like an art, artist background. And you're, you're also in this Sunday class. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm basically, I would always call myself an appreciation of art. Right. Not so much an artist, but I think. Mean, Daryl has slowly started to change my mind about it, that there is really an artist inside. Yes. It's going to come out slowly. Yes. I, I'm just happy about that. Yeah, yeah, no, they're very, very cool pieces. So that is all the, I think we've talked to all the artists here at the mm -hmm. show. And again, is the show going to be open? Will there be anyone sitting in the show? I think uh, the first one is yes. Out, there will be someone who can come in and you know sit in the show. And if you want to come and look at okay. Our artists, just let us know. Okay, so call for an appointment if you'd like to see. Okay, so with Lake Gallery, the opening is usually the time I had my show here as well, and I did a gallery sitting every weekend. Yeah, because not everyone can come to the opening. And then the show is until the 31st, 30th. 30th of March. So if you're in Taichung City and you get a chance, call John at Lake Gallery and come have a look. We'll see you on the next episode.